Okay, day two of Jingle Cross. Today's plan was to basically go a little bit harder because day one, I recognized that I was not hot, f far up enough in the beginning of the race to actually contend a podium spot. And so, even though I had that in my head, I think when, after I win this whole shot, or come close to it, I, I don't know what happened. I just didn't continue to lay on the power. So that kind of went right out the window. And so day three, I really focused on that. And you'll, you'll see that in the highlights of day three. But you can see the footage is quite a bit better here. Actually, this is the day I did win the whole shot. Uh, but tomorrow, um, I think I'm pretty close as well. Spoiler alert. So, um, again, I said I was going to try to stay up a little bit further up. But uh, in the beginning here, this first minute that we're going to show you, and then we're going to skip to all the various highlights, um, you can tell here I'm, I'm going to start to lose some positions, just sort of like I did in the first day. Uh, sure, I'm still fourth wheel here. Uh, maybe about to be fifth wheel. Anyways, fourth wheel here. So this wasn't terrible, um, but it still wasn't as good as maybe I wanted it to be, and I wanted it to be maybe second wheel or just continuing to fly. Um, either way, this was the lesson learned today was while I said I was going to go hard for the first like four or five minutes, uh, I truly only went hard for like maybe the first one minute. And so, again, uh, lesson was, you know, two, four, six, seven feel, wheel maybe here, two, four, six, seven. Um, and that was the lesson from the start. So we get to Mount Crumpet here. And just like last, uh, yesterday, uh, I lose a whole bunch of time. But I learned during pre-ride here that uh, it's cyclocross. You can run and you can use the barriers. And these barriers were actually very strong. The string was really taut. And so the, the wooden posts were pretty good to pull on. And the and the the wire in between them were pretty strong to pull on. And so I used that throughout this race uh, to kind of help me up Mount Crumpet, something I didn't not recognize the first day. But again, still lose quite a bit of time here on Mount Crumpet, just like day one. And the more, the bigger issue here is I can't reclip, clip into my pedals quite a bit because that was so much muddier. I think it was like a 7:30 race, so it's still very wet uh, from dew in the morning, and that was probably my number one problem was being unable to clip in. And surprisingly, I don't practice in the sand, and this was like maybe the longest sand section in the USCX you know series or maybe in any of the series that I've ever seen. Uh, and I recognize I do very, very well in the sand. Um, I almost clipped myself out there, but for the most part, um, I hit these sand sections really hard and fast, and then I was able to keep my momentum. So kind of surprised with myself there in the sand. On this back section, we didn't have this on day one. And you can tell it was a little bit steeper than maybe I was expecting. I did pre-ride it, but I get stuck in no man's land again very early. So just like all my other races so far recently, like Trek Cup and day one, getting stuck in no man's land is, you know, unfortunate. Uh, yes, I did all right in terms of placing, but, you know, I still wasn't able to push myself maybe where I wanted to be. And you can tell here that people are just kind of out of sight, out of mind right now. And that kind of limits myself. Here we are again. I'm getting past, but I'm also failing to clip in because of all the mud on that hill. And yes, I tried to knock out the mud on my cleats, but it was such a problem today with this hill being muddy. So uh, here we are. Just like in day one, I found some power sections like this where air, I, where I was able to, you know, lay down some power, catch a wheel ahead of me, uh, and make up some time in, in the long power sections. But uh, it wasn't exactly perfect. So. This guy almost crashes. Again, when you when you have a four or five field and you're passing guys, you gotta call out on your left or on your right to these guys because they'll move out of the way and you'll say thank you afterwards. So that guy unfortunately didn't do so because he didn't get yelled at or you know didn't get told he was getting he's about to be passed. You gotta do that with these lapped riders. So here we are in the power section. You can tell by the flag in the upper left here or in the middle uh, that it was a bit windy. So I was able to just sit in here. This guy was actually pushing it pretty hard. So. I was totally happy just sitting in this wheel, sitting in this draft, and letting him help, you know, pull me up here. And so I I was at least able to find a wheel that, you know, was able to push me here again, Mount Crumpet, lost some time on that wheel, and again, having so much difficulty, almost embarrassing. You can see that guy on the kid on the right, he had some candy hand ups, which at a 4-5 raise at 7.30 in the morning, I gotta respect it. I'm so kind of mad that I didn't try to grab that candy because uh, that was kind of cool. So again, here we are in the sand, 
and again, I'm sort of surprised. This rut was like, I mean, it was borderline not even a rut, it was just sort of flat, um, flat sand in the beginning there, which was super nice. So the sand was actually pretty easy to hit, and here I am again, going through the sand pretty quickly. So pretty happy again with this, how the sand was going. This hill, again, pretty steep. I'm able to get out of the sandal, but almost unclipped there. Uh, when you turn it around pretty quickly like this, it becomes a little bit of a problem. But I was having a little difficulty there. Here we are. I'm looking back. I don't know exactly why I'm looking back, but I think I was maybe trying to drop that guy behind me. And I'm pretty certain that I did here in that long stretch. But, again, we're at Mount Crumpet, and I'm having a hard time catching the guys ahead of me because um, this is, you know, very difficult and very steep. And I think because of that, I either get caught here or, uh, again, I can't clip into my pedals. I'm drooling pretty heavily here. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> It was getting pretty brutal at this point in the race, um, and I was, you know, having a rough time. But I also wanted to be, like, first wheel or pretty pretty ahead of these, like, um, you know, Cat 5 uh, racers, novice racers down this hill so that I could get into the sand pit with as much momentum, and they let me by. Again, as long as you call it out, uh, they will move, and so that's really, you know, I really appreciate that from everyone understanding it. So here we are again, uh, just absolutely nailing the sand pit, and you know I feel like I, this is one of my strengths that I didn't know I had because I never practiced it. Because who wants to practice? No one wants to practice in the sand. Uh, you get your drive train all messed up, but you know I guess I just got lucky. Here we are again with the kid with the <laughs> candy hand up, and here we are again with my inability to clip in. That was so incredibly frustrating today. So yeah, just these last few clips here, just gonna kind of show you. Uh, pretty much one of my strengths I get apparently now which is uh, riding through sand and you know the trick here I think is just downshifting keeping all your momentum into it keeping that low cadence so that when you do spin out a little bit it's not like so spun out that you like can't even pedal it so fast and then put all your weight on your back put most of your weight on your back wheel that will help with some of these sections where in the sand you don't spin out and you're able to kind of keep your traction as well as kind of letting your front wheel slide out a little bit but then still being in control by having your weight on your back wheel. So that's the basics of sand I guess. Again when I don't practice it maybe I don't know my you know necessarily know the the best tricks to it but that's what I hear online and that's what I hear from all the forums and whatnot so I think that's pretty much how uh, you can successfully hit the sand. So here we are last lap and uh, I'm, we're ready for a sprint here with this guy ahead. I finally caught him. It was about two laps, uh, two laps or something. I was trying to catch this guy, so pretty happy. All right, brother, we got a sprint here. And you can tell here, I'm like, all right, brother, here we got a sprint here, letting him know this is going to be a fun finish. I was really happy, you know, like being able to hit a sprint finish like this, but look. Yeah, so I say sorry, but like I really like when you have a fun finish and you know when an end of a race is, ends in a sprint It's a lot of fun and I didn't know if this guy was in my field or not You know whether he's a four or five So I laid down and you know as if he was a four and try to win this sprint and I, I do beat him But I think he ended up being a five. So anyways, that was the takeaways from day two I uh, hope you enjoyed this day three ends up being pretty well as you know pretty good as well and, you know, let's see how the rest of this uh, Jingle Cross weekend turns out.